lock key content on your blog to build up your mailing list. This technique involves putting your very best blog content behind your page. People have to sign up to your mailing list in order to access key information. This technique builds a responsive mailing list of subscribers precisely because it filters for the most motivated subscribers. The big danger with most email lists turns on the fact that bad subscribers make for bad lists. People find themselves on your list simply because they're just looking for the booklet that you're offering. Once they get the free booklet, they don't bother to unsubscribe, but they also don't bother to read your emails. They become list squatters. They're completely useless. By stepping away from the model of offering freebies like booklets and instead offering your best information on your site, you create a reversed opt-in system. This is how it works. You publish high-quality content based on your readers' needs. These all lead to different solutions. People are all excited because they're seeing all these great solutions. However, throughout the content, they are reminded that there is one best solution out there. And by the time they get all excited about reading up on this amazing solution, they find out that they can only access it if they join your mailing list. Advantages The big advantage of this technique in boosting mailing list responsiveness is that you start at the beginning. You only recruit people who are actually interested in the information your mailing list offers. These people are less likely to unsubscribe and are more likely to buy stuff. The only people who would go through this process are those who are actually interested in what you have to offer. Of course, this all boils down to how you set everything up. If you're making all sorts of unrealistic promises, chances are you'll end up only attracting the wrong people. These are people who are not really all that interesting. Disadvantages There's really only one big disadvantage with this technique. You will get a lower number of subscribers. How come? You heavily filter them based on the content of your blog. Only people who are truly hyped up and excited about the best solution would make it all the way through. The good news is you are compensated for this lower number by the fact that these people are more likely to subscribe to your list, less likely to unsubscribe, and more likely to buy. Offer a video series. It's easier for people to clearly understand the value a list offers and join that list if you appeal to them through video. When you present a video, you can pack a lot of information in one video clip. Not only will you be able to explain a lot of concepts, but you will also get people emotionally excited in what you have to offer. It creates a one-to-one -one kind of personal and emotional impact, especially if you are using a video spokesperson. Even if you are using an animation, you can still present enough information that people would be able to trust your solution enough to want to learn more. You can also tease the viewer regarding information that they can buy through the affiliate links that you are promoting. When you offer a video series to people visiting your blog or your landing page, this increases the likelihood that they would look forward to your emails. Remember, they're looking to watch the video series. This means that when you send out your email, they're less likely to disregard it. They probably would be on the lookout for it because they want to pick up on certain key pieces of information revealed through your video. Advantages A video is very personal and immediate. Believe it or not, a video is relatively easy to make. In fact, you can do it yourself. Just get a quality microphone like a Blue Yeti from Amazon. As far as video goes, you can take it with your personal computer's built-in camera. The video quality for most built-in webcams are actually quite good. Another great advantage of offering video series as incentives for mailing list memberships is the fact that you can create a lot of this type of content. Since it only takes a few minutes for you to speak into a microphone in front of a camera, you can tackle a lot of topics and it's not going to take you too much time, effort, and energy. Video is also a great way to make passive income because you use this video series to get people to sign up to your list and if you chop them up into small enough pieces, they actually get all excited about your next email. So, they'll always be on the lookout for your next email and once you get them to open your email, you can hit them with affiliate links. When people click on these links and buy something, you make money. Please keep in mind that this is passive. You record once and you can actually make money many times over off the free video series that you are offering to build up your mailing list. Disadvantages The sad reality is that while a lot of people appreciate that you have a video to offer, if you are offering a video course to build up your mailing list, please understand that when people see your video page, most of them will not view it all the way through. Most people have short attention spans. This cuts down on the total number of people signing up for your list. The good news is that this is not all that bad. In fact, this can act as some sort of filtering system. If somebody watches your video all the way through, there's a higher likelihood that they will not only sign up to your list, but it also increases the chances that they are actually interested in your video series. This, in turn, 
boosts the likelihood that these people are likely to check out your emails, click on your links, and buy something. Other disadvantages include you have to invest time or money in a great script. You can't just talk off the top of your head and stammer or stutter your way through the video. That's going to look unprofessional. You have to work from a script so that you can keep your videos tightly packed with information and more effective. Remember, people have short attention spans. You also have to have enough on-screen charm. You can't look, act, and sound like a banana slug and expect people to find you credible and authoritative. This means you have to look neat, you have to dress right, make sure the lighting is correct, and otherwise look personable and presentable. Finally, you may need professional audio and video editing help. The good news is, you can get these types of services at a relatively low price, thanks to freelancing platforms like Fiverr. Boost your list's responsiveness by reverse engineering your competitor's best content. It doesn't matter what niche you're in, chances are you already have competitors. They have their own mailing lists. This is good news. If you want to get a head start in boosting the responsiveness of your own mailing list, don't start from scratch. Sign up to all of your competitors' mailing lists and figure out what they're doing, and then come up with your own version based on some common elements of their materials. Chances are you would be operating from a better place than if you were to just come up with your own completely new, untried, and unproven materials. This method simply just gives you a place to start. Don't just reverse engineer and stop. Use this as a place to start and then continuously optimize your materials to get better and better results. How it works. Find keywords related to your niche. You can use the Google Keyword Planner tool to get this information. Once you have this information, find your competitors and look for competitors that have mailing lists and sign up to all of these mailing lists. Pay attention to the headlines of these lists. Take note of the topics of these updates. Once you have this information, figure out the most common topics that appear and the most common headline writing style. Copy the style and then create original content talking about the same topics. Study your list's performance and get rid of emails that aren't opened enough and don't get clicked enough. Optimize them by replacing them with different versions and keep tweaking your emails until you get a steady open rate and click-through rate. From there, you can then optimize your landing pages to increase the income you make from your mailing list traffic. Advantages This technique gives you a tremendous head start. You're not starting from scratch. Also, you make your competitors do your homework for you. Once you figure out what works, you create your own version. Disadvantage The big disadvantage is laziness. If you just simply copy and paste your competitor's stuff, it's only a matter of time until you get a scary letter from a lawyer in your mailbox. Don't do it. Study your competitors' topics and headlines, but don't copy them. Come up with something similar. When you know that certain topics are hot, come up with original material that addresses these topics. Please understand that there's a big difference between coming up with your own stuff based on the headline writing style and topics of your competitors and simply copying and pasting their materials. Reach out to your list and ask questions. Believe it or not, if you already have a list, simply reaching out to your list members is a great way of boosting responsiveness. When list publishers ask questions to their list members, the list members would think that they matter. They would think that they are important enough for the list publisher to want to listen to them. This is a big deal because, let's face it, a lot of those list members are actually on many other lists. Chances are many of these other list publishers couldn't really care less about what they have to say. You stand out from the crowd when you actively reach out and ask your customers what they think. What do you do with this information? Well, when you ask questions from your list members, you can use this for ideas on polls and other high engagement content you're going to be publishing on your list. By figuring out what they want and you sending them updates based on this info, you make them feel that they matter. You give them an equal voice in shaping the direction of your mailing list. Your mailing list is no longer some sort of one-way conversation with a captive audience. Instead, it becomes a product of a two-way collaboration between the publisher and an audience. 
This leads to a sense of community and can produce great results down the line. Advantages If you reach out to your list consistently and constantly, you build your list on your members' actual needs. You're not operating out of theory. You're not simply copying what your competitors are doing. Instead, the list actually involves issues that your members are definitely interested in. This increases chances that people would emotionally buy into your list. They feel that they are part of something bigger and this fosters a sense of community. Believe it or not, this enables you to distinguish your list from your competitors. Your competitors are probably just using canned emails that were written by somebody else. A lot of the stuff their list talks about probably has nothing to do with the actual needs of the list members. It's no surprise that a lot of those emails simply do not get opened and read. Disadvantage The only disadvantage to reaching out to your list members and asking questions so you can craft the right kind of content involves statistical representations. You have to understand that in any group of 100 people, only a handful will have the time or motivation to want to talk to you if you ask questions. Be very careful of this situation because most vocal list members might not be all that statistically representative. This means that whatever suggestions they may have may not be actually the kind of improvements or content feedback that are shared by most other list members. Always be on the lookout for this. Look for warning signs so you can shoot for statistically representative feedback. Track and optimize your update elements. If you want to maximize the responsiveness of your mailing list, you have to be proactive. You can't just buy canned emails from a list publisher and then upload this to your autoresponder software and expect to make money. It doesn't work that way. You have to always be part of the equation. The good news is by following the simple steps below, you can maximize the responsiveness of your mailing list, which can lead to a bigger payday later on. How email optimization works. Break down your emails into elements. Usually, emails are made of a headline, which is the title, or subject line, the actual content, the type of content, and call to action or active links within the email. Also, the content that you send out via email has certain lengths. The most common is around 300 words. Some email lists send out very long emails. We're talking about over a thousand words. Others send very short emails that consist of barely a few lines. Next, send out your updates and see how well they are received. Pay attention to your open rate and the click-through rate. Starting with one element, make variations and run a task to a small subsegment of your mailing list. See if there is any improvement from the previous email's performance. If there isn't, make variations on the element again. For example, if your original headline is, I can't believe this happened, change it to, this little secret got me a new Mercedes-Benz and you switch from headline to headline until you see a significant improvement in your open rate and click rate. Once you see an improvement, make small variations of that headline and test again to see if you can get more improvements. If there is no further improvement in responsiveness, you then move on to the next element. In this case, you can change the type of content, and from there, move on to content action and content length. Keep optimizing on an element-to-element -element basis until you maximize the overall responsiveness on your emails. Advantages. This technique is methodical because you're not just coming up with wholesale changes across the board. Instead, you're restricting your optimization to one specific element at a time. This removes all sorts of guesswork. A lot of list marketers fail because they make changes on a wholesale basis. They notice that their original email package is not getting any results. So they come up with a completely new package and then they get results. Little do they know that the change can be traced to only one small tweak instead of the wholesale change. But the problem is, they're clueless about this. They wouldn't know. With an element-by-element -element optimization model, you can pinpoint which elements you can tweak to maximize responsiveness. You're not relying on your intuition or gut feelings. This gives you a tremendous amount of control and the process is predictable. It's also statistics-based. Either your emails are getting a lot of engagement or they're not, so you optimize them. Disadvantage. The only disadvantage to this technique is its methodology. Remember, when you send out a variation of an email to a subsegment of your mailing list, you only send it to that subsegment once. You don't keep mailing everybody the same basic email as you make small tweaks. That's going to kill your mailing list. People are going to get annoyed and unsubscribe or, worse yet, stop reading your emails. This means you're going to have to send to small segments all of your emails as you optimize. 
This can be a serious problem because if your list is fairly small, you can quickly run out of list members when optimizing list elements. This drags out your timeline for optimization.